This is the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast, episode number 39. Hello and welcome to this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. My name is John Melly, and this is the podcast dedicated to teaching in-depth and advanced marketing strategies for people in the voiceover and audio production professions. My goal is to help you make more money by showing you ways to leverage your time, charge more for your talents, and allow you to spend more time doing the things you want to do in your life. Hey there, it's John. How are you? Thanks for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. As of this recording, we have had 34,480 downloads of all the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast episodes. And I'm really excited to tell you that for the second year in a row, this podcast has been nominated for a Voice Arts Award. And the Voice Arts Awards are going to be in Los Angeles in November. I'm not going to be able to attend because uh, my schedule prohibits me from traveling out to L.A. in November. And my parents are having their 50th wedding anniversary in November. So we're planning a little shindig for them. I'm very excited and really proud of my parents. 50 years. I haven't done anything for 50 years. I haven't even been breathing for 50 years. <laughs> so anyway, I'm really proud of them and their their 50th wedding anniversary. Wow. We'll, we'll see what happens at the Voice Arts Awards. We'll see if this podcast comes away with a win. If it doesn't, it's still an honor to be nominated again for the second year in a row. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Last episode, episode 38, was titled, Will Uber Technology Kill VoiceOver? And we had a huge number of downloads in a very short period of time for that episode, well over a thousand. And for, statistically for this podcast, that's a lot in a short amount of time. So a lot of interest there. And I had episode 38 transcribed, and I'm turning it into a book or a, a short book, a Kindle book, because I'm adding more content that I was not able to include in the podcast episode. I will let you know when that becomes available on Kindle. I'll put a link, obviously, to the show notes in, on the podcast page, voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. The other thing I wanted to let you know is part of that episode, I included an opportunity for people to look over my shoulder while I create a product and service. And part of my, you, you can go back and listen in depth to episode 38, because I don't really want to spend a lot of time on that episode. I've already done it. But the pay-to-play sites are basically voiceover commodity marketplaces. And a lot of people get frustrated there because, and they serve a purpose. I've gotten clients from the pay-to-play sites, uh, the two big ones, and they serve a purpose. But at the same time, there's thousands of people there competing for a finite number of jobs. And if you spend your day auditioning all day long and you find yourself competing with thousands of people for the same gig and not getting any feedback or what have you, you could get frustrated. I really have moved away from those commodity marketplaces and generate revenue by doing other things. I create my own products and services. And in episode 38, I offered an opportunity for people to watch how I do it. There is a link in this episode in the show notes for you to sign up. You have to sign up for this list because if you've already subscribed to the podcast email list, you're not going to get information on this. You have to sign up for this particular list because I don't want to spam people. I want only want people who are interested in this. So there's a link for you to be able to do that in the show notes. I opened it up last episode. The opportunity is still there. So if this interests you, go ahead and sign up. I'm working without a net today uh, because these are some thoughts that I've had over a couple of experiences recently, I tend to bring my day-to-day -day life into this podcast, and I try and show you how the everyday experience actually relates to voiceover. Because one of the things you'll hear me say frequently is that all businesses are the same, in that we need to attract clients, perform a service, provide high-quality service, get those customers, clients to come back and purchase from us again, and refer us to others. Every business, whether you're an electrician, a plumber, a voice talent, a lawyer, you name it, we all have to do the same thing. What we may be offering may be different, but the principles apply to pretty much every business. And another one of my maxims, if you will, is voiceover is a fun business, but it's still a business, and we need to treat it as such. And so... There are a lot of things, if you've read any of my writings on, or you listened to the very first episode of this podcast, 
creating your own world in which you operate? Are you a commodity? It all ties together. Episode 38, I talk about commodities. This book on Kindle that I'm in the process of putting together talks a lot about the voiceover commodity marketplace. It all ties together. Andrew Locke, who was a guest a few episodes back, he came up with the line that says, marketing is everything and everything is marketing. And I want to talk about courtesy and politeness and manners because I recently had some experiences both inside voiceover directly and outside voiceover uh, in my day-to-day living where courtesy was absent and it has had an impact on me personally. Um, You know, nothing that I can't get over, but it was really annoying but also on a voice talent that I was working with. And we had a client who gave feedback notes on a particular read, and they were just downright nasty. And does that have an impact? Is courtesy missing in our day-to-day activity, in our lives? And what can we do about it? I'm from Boston. In the Northeast, we're notorious for being kind of cold. Not just the weather, but personality-wise. But we're really, but, but once you get to know us, we're very supportive. I mean, I think if you looked at what happened with the Boston Marathon bombing, our city shut down when we went and looked for those subhuman terrorists that um, murdered those people. We basically shut the city down and the surrounding towns to find them. So we can pull together. You know, we've been at this a while. We're the, one of the oldest cities in the country, and it's a great city, but we're not really polite. <laughs> and my brother lives in Louisiana and other parts of the country. Ann and I have traveled, as you've heard in different episodes of this podcast. It's not like this in other parts of the country when you're out and about doing your errands. You know, when I visited my brother Eric down in Louisiana, uh, you know, people will just say hi when you're walking down the sidewalk. And sad to say, when you, you do, when somebody does that to you in Boston, you kind of look at them like, what do you want? You're looking for money? What? Why are you saying hi to me? Down there, it's just like, hi, how are you? <laughs> and it's, it's friendly. Imagine that. But I think in business, particularly voiceover, you know you will audition. And if you don't get it, the way you know you didn't get it is that you never hear back from people. And I can see both sides of the coin on that particular issue, that if they got back to everybody who didn't make it, then they wouldn't have time to run their business. I understand. But is that right? Is it wrong? Is there a general lack of courtesy and politeness in society today? So let me share an experience. I had a female voice talent that I use for projects, was requested by a client to voice a commercial for the radio station. So I reached out to her, sent her the script. She came back with, sent me back the audio files, put them together, emailed the the spots off to the client. And the client came back with feedback notes. I'm not even going to read them, but they were plain rude. Honest criticism and feedback, like we need you to pronounce it this way. We'd like to have a little bit more energy here. It sounds rushed. Could we do it a little slower? Maybe we could wordsmith the language a little bit to give you a little more time. You know, that's all fair game. But they were making comments like, she sounds like she's on speed or too much caffeine. Don't let her drink coffee. And um, this is awful. Uh, Every one of these things were terrible and all that, you know. And it was so bad that the voice talent who had done some stuff for the client before. And this, this woman's a pro. You know, she does a lot of stuff for a lot of big name clients. Has done voice work with me for years. She called me up and she said, I'm never working for them again. Don't even bother sending me a script. She'd never been so offended by a client. Now, I don't know what the client hoped to gain by making the comments the way that they did, but (laughs) they lost out uh, because she won't. She said, I don't care what clients they have. If anything comes from this agency again, don't even send it to me. I won't do it. And I thought, you know what? Good for her. She helped me out uh, for that client. She saw the job through for that particular project. But from now on, when the client asks, I'm going to say she's no longer available. If they ask why, I'll have to tell them. (laughs) Long term, what does that do? Well, I have to respect the voice talent for setting standards for herself, saying, I'm not going to be treated this way. And I'm right there with her. The client probably isn't even aware of it. 
at this point, and who knows the damage that they're doing. I do know for a fact that it's turned off several people from frequenting the establishment and that they won't go there and give them the business. And so there's an impact. You wonder how many other clients this agency is treating this way. Word gets out fast, particularly in social media today. You know, your reputation is everything. So the damage has already started, but they're not even aware of it. So that's the voiceover part of the courtesy thing. The real life thing was Ann and I smelled gas, in, you know, natural gas in front of the house. We're catching whiffs of it. And we're like, geez, I wonder what that is. So it wasn't a strong odor. So we just thought, oh, maybe it was down the street or it was something else. But then when we started to smell it over and over, we said, well, let's call the gas company. They came out. Sure enough, there was a leak in the line in front of the house. And <laughs> this, is a, this has been an interesting experience. They said, we'll be back sometime within the next three months to fix it. <laughs> they came in the house. They said, nope, the leak's not in the house. It's outside. So uh, we have three months because it wasn't contained in an area, so it wasn't going to explode. So over the next few weeks, we saw more and more lines being pa spray painted on the, and arrows being spray painted on the road because Dig Safe obviously came out. And then one morning, Ann had gone off to work. She usually leaves before I do. And I'm home and it's like quarter nine in the morning and I get a knock on the door and I open it up and it's like, hi, we're the gas company. Hi, how are you? Yeah, we got to fix the leak out in front of your house. Great. We need to get down into your basement. Uh, okay. So I said, I'll meet you in the side, open up the bulkhead. They come down in, they, three of them looking around. Okay, this goes here, the duber fludge is over here, and the caframus, and the dufinator valve, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. The guy who is in charge of the crew says, all right, we're going to need to get in and out of here most of the day. And I looked at him, I said, what? He says, yeah, how long, I said, how long are you going to be? Uh, most of the day. I said, you want me to leave the basement wide open for you to just come in and out of the house all day long? I, like, I got to go to work. Yeah. He says, well, you know, you can lock that basement door and uh, there'll be a police detail here all day long and yada, yada, yada. And I said, you know, it would have been nice to give, a, give us a call, a heads up. Yeah, don't, we don't call for gas leaks. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, seriously? If it was like not an emergency, like it was going to take you up to three months to get this leak fixed and then you just show up and I got to drop everything. So I, I don't have as flexible, flexible a schedule as Ann does. So I called her up. I said, you're not going to believe this. Relayed the story to her. She had to come home, take a day off from work, deal with that. And the best part is these yahoos dig up the road to access the gas line. And as they're doing it, the backhoe rips out the water main. So the house is now without water. Water is pouring into the hole that they've been digging, and it's squirting up through the asphalt and the granite. And, of course, then the neighbors start poking their heads out like, you know, like whack-a-mole. They're <laughs> popping their heads out of the house. Oh, did you guys hit the water line? The city had to come, go down the end of the road, and shut the water off for the entire street. And I looked at the guy, the foreman, and I said, if my house is covered in eggs... On November 1st, after Halloween, I'm coming looking for you. I mean, accidents happen, but then I got to go tell my neighbors that, you know, sorry, this water got hit, yada, yada. And the house didn't have water uh, for half the day. They had to shut the street off. People are coming out with towels around them. It's going, what's the deal? <sighs> they were there 12 hours, 13 hours before they got everything fixed. And I won't even tell you about the week after that our water, our hot water heater went. I can't prove it, but I know it was because of all the pressure and the back pressure and the all that kind of stuff going on and the digging and the pounding from the work they were doing out front. Can't prove it, but I know it. And you say, why, John, what is this? And it goes to my whole thing about a lack of courtesy. I said, you know, a heads up would have been nice. Yeah, we don't call for gas leaks. Why don't you? Why don't you give people a heads up? The bill comes every month. They know our contact information. It's not like they don't know how to get in touch with us. Why doesn't that happen? We would have at least had a heads up. We wouldn't have had to move stuff out of the way in a rush. It's just this lack of courtesy. So what do you do about it? You know, 
the big thing that the biggest thing that I can do is talk about it in this podcast, get people to start thinking about it. But here's what I've started to do. I've actually started to say hello to people on the street, I'm trying to turn that whole cold northern Yankee image around, at least for this guy. Also, when I'm driving, if somebody wants to come out, let them out of the parking lot. Don't block an intersection. Somebody needs to turn or wants to turn in front of you at a red light or a green light or whatever, let them through. I'm probably driving the people behind me absolutely crazy, but at the same time, you know, what are we rushing to? <laughs> That's what I want to know is what... Louis C.K. had a great bit. I think he was on, it was either David, uh, not David Letterman. He was either on, this shows you how far back it goes, Jay Leno or Conan. He had this bit where it was, everything is amazing, but everybody's miserable. And we have everything we need, but everybody gets upset if their latte takes too long at Starbucks. I was in line at Starbucks a few months ago. And this person in front of me was getting all uppity because it was they had to change out the filter or something on one of the machines they used to make these beverages. You know, it was taking five minutes to make this cappuccino, whatever the heck it was that they wanted. And they started getting kind of rude with the clerk behind the counter, the person who was waiting on them. And so they finished up their order and let them move on. And... The woman behind the counter looked at me. She said, I'm so sorry it took so long. And I said, seriously, it's a cup of coffee. Let's, let's put a little perspective on this, folks. There are men and women serving in Iraq and Afghanistan, carrying around 60-pound backpacks and machine guns, poking around caves in the mountains, looking for bad guys that want to kill them. And we're worried that it's going to take five minutes for our latte to, to get made? Seriously? Life's pretty good. And I think we need to stop and take stock of how good we have it here in America and be grateful for it and appreciate our fellow human beings a little more than we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, I think tragedy hits and it's in those moments that we bind together and help each other out. But you know what? Let someone out of the parking lot. Be courteous in your emails. Don't be nasty when you're making comments, you know? I'm tired of it. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I'm getting cranky. And I don't want to be that guy. So I'm. what am I going to do about it? I'm doing what I can in my day-to-day -day activities to be a little more polite and considerate of other people. If you apply that, I actually, I'm going to tell you something very personal. Sometimes I have these, when I'm half awake, half asleep, the, I think they call it the reverie state. I have some of my most meaningful thoughts. Like, I won't tell you everything that happens, but a lot of times I'll get these thoughts that just come racing forth from my subconscious. And they become, I become aware of them and they make an impression on me. So I've been, you know, I've been doing this voice stuff for a long time, always looking for ways to freshen it up. And this is, God's honest truth. I was, you know, I was trying to keep the delivery fresh. Sometimes you get into a rut of delivering a piece of copy. It had been something that over the course of a, I don't know, a month or so, started noticing it, was becoming aware of it in my performance. And I thought, what can I do? You know, you can take a workshop and all that, and which is definitely valuable. Just don't have the time for that right now, given my schedule. But I had this thought. It was half awake, half asleep. I was getting ready to start my day. And this thought came through and it said, what if you loved them? Meaning the people who would hear the message. What if you delivered the copy in a way that was like you loved the audience? What if you delivered the copy in such a way that the person who heard it on some subconscious level felt a connection in a way that was just different from any other type of delivery. You can't tell me that people don't know it. You can hear a smile. We're really good at picking up cues from other humans. I was reading a book the other day. It's called The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. 
he uses this example about people discount their intuition. They get a feeling about a situation, you know, like, eh, I don't feel really good about this. And then we find ways to rationalize it. Oh, that's nothing, you know, and they people don't listen to that. My spidey sense is tingling and we discount it. And that's when problems happen. And he said, let's give you another example. He said, people have been reading people for tens of thousands of years. It's been built into our DNA. He said, to give you an example, which will help you believe it, have you ever been driving in a car and there's a car in front of you or a car along the side of you or a car anywhere around your vehicle as you're moving and you have thought to yourself, that person is going to cut me off or they're going to turn really quickly or they're going to come out of this lane. You just knew that the person was going to do that and sure enough, they do it. Now, this person is inside a vehicle or a truck or an SUV, you're in your own vehicle, whatever distance away, and yet you are able to perceive and predict the person driving the other vehicle is going to do something that, and you prepare for it. We're really good at reading other people and hearing cues. I say this because if, what if you approached your voiceover copy in a way that said, you know what? I love the person who's going to hear this message even if it's for new tires <laughs> or a free cup of coffee at one of the places because it's National Coffee Day or whatever. But if you delivered the copy in such a way that you said, I love you, do you think that would make a difference? It's very subtle. I've talked a lot about one of my favorite bands is Rush. And I'm a drummer, and you know that. And uh, Neil Peart is the drummer for Rush. And he, at one point in his career went and studied with a, a drum teacher. And after 30 years of playing the drums a certain way, he reorganized his entire drum set and changed his entire way of playing. And studied with this guy and just started to learn the main point, unless you're a musician, you, you may understand this, but the main difference that his teacher said is the space in between the hits on whatever it is, the drum, the tom, the cymbal, whatever, the space in between those impacts is just as important as the actual note. And he did all of this, and he came back and he's joined his bandmates. And when he started playing for them, they were listening, and they were thinking, you know, we really can't hear a difference. But then when they actually started to play their instruments and sing along with his playing, that's when they noticed it. They were like, it was just a slightly different feel, but they had to be part of it. They had to be playing with him to actually hear it and feel it. So all these things matter. We're pretty sharp. We're pretty smart when it comes to other people. So if we have this courtesy, this caring for our listeners, and we put that into our delivery, our performance how much more of an impact will it have in your auditions, people responding to a call to action in a, in a radio spot, tuning into a promo or whatever. Whatever it is that we want people to do as a result of listening to the messages that we're creating for our clients. What if we put courtesy and caring and compassion into our mindset in our delivery? And what difference or an impact would that have in our businesses and as a result, our bottom line. Something to consider. I know I went all over the place today a little bit, but I really tried to connect, it, connect the dots to bring it all back to let's apply some courtesy and caring and compassion in all the aspects of our lives when we're out day to day, when we're driving, doing errands. And with, if we bring that energy to our day to day activities and our mindset, we can't help but bring that into our performance. So I think that's a good place to stop for your consideration. And I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. You're investing your time to listen to these messages, these thoughts that I have. And I am honored that you would do so. And, and the emails and the messages I get uh, on the LinkedIn group for the voiceover marketing podcast, the Facebook group for the voiceover marketing podcast, and your direct messages too. They mean a lot. And so I wish for you a caring and compassionate day. I'll talk to you in episode 40, which is the next one. Till then, take care. I hope you do well. Peace. Our program originates in the Boston studios. We hope you'll join us again. Until then, we bid you au revoir, keep your chin up, and the best of luck. 
Well, that's it for this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes. And please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one coaching where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at johnmelly.com. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.